Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So today's video is going to be a little bit of a chronic illness update slash health update kind of because a lot of things have changed since the last time I updated you. I actually do not remember the last time I did a chronic illness update. I know it was at least two years ago. I don't remember what was going on then. And so I'm just going to kind of pick up from when I got sick last year till now. And I'm going to fill in some of that stuff as well as some of the changes. And I'm just going to kind of go in the order that I've got everything written down. That way it's easier for me. And at the end, maybe if I remember something that needs to be thrown in, yeah, and I'll tell you a little bit of everything. And yes, I'm sorry about the lighting. It's 9.35 at night. This video is going up tomorrow morning. I had not filmed it yet. I needed to get it filmed, but I hadn't had a chance, so I'm going to film it now. <laughs> so... The last time I did a chronic illness update, I'm pretty sure it was two years ago, at my 10 year, when I hit having a chronic illness for 10 years. Well, it's June of 2021, and I've officially had a chronic illness for 12 years at this point, but I'm going to kind of back up until August of 2020, because that's kind of when everything started that I kind of need to fill you in on and I am not filming this for pity I add this in every chronic illness update or chronic illness video I do because I always have that one person that sends me a message or makes a nasty comment that you're just doing this for pity no I'm doing this to educate the people that need the education on it and there might be someone out there that I can help trust me I don't want your pity I get enough of that okay so, basically, if you've watched my previous chronic illness videos, you know that I typically get sick in September, and then about March, it kind of goes away. Well, last year, I started getting sick in August. I got sick a whole month earlier than I typically do, and at first, it was just, I was shaking really bad. Like, you can kind of see that I have tremors. Like that kind of thing. I was just shaking a whole lot worse than I normally do. It's not really that bad today. <sighs> but that's when I noticed it. I was shaking a lot worse than I typically do. And I just figured I'm shaking. I don't remember not shaking. I honestly do not remember the last time I was not shaking. So I kind of just let it go. And I didn't worry about it. And then towards the end of August, I started getting really dizzy. So, I was thinking, okay. This is kicking my butt a little bit earlier, but took my meds, continued to follow what I've been following and doing what I've been doing. And then October, let's get forward to October of 2020, and I pass out. I've passed out, I've passed out before, it wasn't anything new, but I have never passed out. I hadn't passed out in a while. I think it had been over, yeah, it had been close to a year since the last time I passed out, and I passed out in October, so I was like, okay, that's a little weird, but I went home, I rested, made sure I had some food in me. Because you always have that one person who goes, well, it's because you haven't been eating that much, or you didn't eat today, or anything. So, I ate to make said people shut up, and, <laughs> and I rested, and I didn't think anything of it. And then, of course, after I passed out from, like, then on, I was fine. It was my typical... September through March symptoms. I have good days, I have bad days. Some days kick my ass worse than others. So I didn't think of anything of it. Well, fast forward to March of 2021, so this year, 
and when I'm supposed to be starting to get better, I'm not getting better. I'm getting worse. Most of it was dizziness related. I was dizzier than normal. My mechlazine wasn't working anymore. I could take a whole 25 and it wouldn't feel like I'd taken anything at all. So that's when I noticed things were getting worse. But I noticed it dizzy related. And sometimes I just have really bad dizziness with the mechlazine just doesn't touch. And I had that issue before, so the doctor said. Sometimes, depending on what you take it with, when you take it, it can do that. So, after a little while, well, like a month of feeling like, well, a month and a half, because it took an additional week and a half to get in with the doctor, I did, end up, I, had, I did end up switching doctors in April, because the doctor I was seeing, I just didn't like him anymore. I just don't, didn't like him. I didn't feel like he was helping me. So I switched doctors. So it took me an extra week and a half to get, I could have had an appointment immediately. And I waited an extra week and a half to get in with a new doctor. And the only reason I went to the doctor was because I was getting so dizzy. It was affecting me at work and the dizziness was getting so bad where I thought I was going to pass out. I almost did pass out at Zumba one day in April, but since I hadn't passed, or, but since I hadn't passed out since October, I didn't think anything of it. It wasn't that big of a deal. I just kind of let it go. So I did go to the doctor. Went through the whole spiel of, okay, I've had these issues for this long. Um, I do this, 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 and this, and I'm on this, and all this works and all this stuff and they did their exam and they did an EKG and some blood work just to rule everything out and blood work came back and I was no longer anemic and I have auto I had autoimmune hemolytic anemia I didn't know it could go away I had never heard of it going away not once and blood work comes back and I no longer have it. In fact, my iron level is six, or like, yeah, my ferritin level was six times higher than it was supposed to be. My iron level was three times higher than it was supposed to be and somehow I no longer had an autoimmune disorder. But I was having some showing some funky things on an EKG. So I'm thinking, okay, it's just a funky EKG. I wasn't thinking anything of it. And of course my symptoms had gotten worse. I I was really freaking dizzy at the point where I thought I was gonna faint. I was really weak, really shaky and all this weird stuff I typically have. That's what I just, that's why I thought I was just anemic. I just thought maybe something had changed with my anemia. And no, you're no longer anemic, but you have these same symptoms. Well, about the final week of April, I started having chest pain and noticing my heart palpitations a lot worse. And of course, I've already had an EKG that says, hey, you're, you're having PVCs. So I'm thinking my heart my heart palpitations was PVCs. I passed out the last day of April and I'm showing PVCs on another EKG that was ran that day after I passed out. So I had to go to the doctor for follow-up that following Friday where they did another EKG and did more of a focused exam on my heart and of course this this point was with a nurse practitioner and not the doctor so yeah 
so I don't think she was really aware, even though she was included in my first exam because the doctor wanted a second opinion. So, yeah. But it's like she hadn't heard anything because she didn't hear me mention that I'd been having heart palpitation. She wasn't really sure why they did they, it was like she wasn't sure why they did it to well bleed at the first exam. And I hadn't been having chest pain. The chest pain was new. I had not had chest pain until like the day before. And I had it for a little bit and it went away. So I didn't think anything of it. And then the day that I passed out, the last day of April, it was really bad. I felt like crap all day. I could not shake it. And... The chest pain had kind of been with me all day, and it slowly gotten worse. So, go back to my follow up to the doctor with a nurse practitioner, and she tells me, okay, well, it could be reflux. It could be indigestion, it could be heartburn, so I'm going to prescribe you Prilosec. I never took the Prilosec. The EKG was funky. It showed what it showed three rate changes and what I was told the doctor was four PVCs to later be told by a cardiologist who reviewed it later on that there were six. But either way, they scheduled me for a halter monitor. So on May 14th, I went and had my halter monitor placed. I don't, they only did a 24 hour halter monitor. I don't think that was long enough, but either way, it came back. A few PVCs, not really anything to worry about, but it, you have a junctional rhythm. Well, that's a little odd, but of course, the nurse practitioner sends me the results of this along with halter monitor relative, halter monitor relatively normal. Okay, I'm sorry, I don't do relatively normal. It's either normal or it's not. <laughs> there is no relatively normal for me. But I just didn't worry about it. I never took the Prilosec because I knew, because it's, she was like telling me I was stupid. At one point she accused me of being on drugs and if I would just tell her the truth that I was on drugs then all this would go away. And I'm thinking, yeah, no. So, I hadn't planned on going back, I just wasn't going to, and I passed out again on the 24th of May. So I talked to the paramedic that I've been talking, that I've been talking to, that I work with, that I kind of filled in on all of this. And I said, do you think I need to be pushing for a referral to a cardiologist? And he said, yeah. So, and I don't know if he watches these videos, but if you do, I hope you don't care that I mentioned you. And if you do, let me know and, yeah. Okay. But I'd passed out on the 24th. I was, the first available appointment was that Friday with the doctor. So I got in that Friday with the actual doctor again. And he went over all my test results, told me, asked me if I'd taken the Prilosec, and I said, no, I never took it. He said, okay, well, that's good. And then he said, and the nurse practitioner wanted me to see a neurologist. That appointment was originally scheduled for May 27th. I did some research, talked to a few people had been who had been to a neurologist for dizziness, and they said it's a VNG um, and an MRI. That's pretty much all they do. Well, I had those tests done years ago at an ENT, and they came back normal. So I just didn't, so I just canceled the neurologist appointment and didn't go. And the doctor asked me about that and he said, well, that's fine because <laughs> you have the tests, they were normal, there's no point in you redoing tests that were normal. And then he's, 
And we went over the hall to monitor and some blood work a little bit more in depth than the nurse practitioner had. And I did, instead of getting stuff that was like relatively normal, which is what I kept getting from the nurse practitioner, he kind of broke down. Okay, this isn't normal. This is what's going on. This is what we need to do. So he redid the blood work. He ran another 12 lead or another EKG. And this time I'm showing a junctional rhythm again. And so the plan is I'm going to go for an echo on July 9th. The earliest I could get in was July 9th. I'm hoping there is a cancellation for an earlier appointment that I can take and maybe get in a little bit sooner. Because if right now treatment is looking like a pacemaker, and if I don't have to have a pacemaker, then I would prefer not to have to have one. So, and of course, I will do whatever I have to. Other than that, I'm waiting for an echo. I mean, I have to go for my echo on the 9th. I'm not working currently. Currently, I am on medical leave from the fire department. At least until after my echo. Until we figure out what we're going to do. And I'm being told to monitor myself as close as possible. And I'm, that's what I'm doing. I'm monitoring myself as close as possible. I'm, like, I always pay attention to how I feel. I just had the last 10 years, or the last 12 years. It's just what I've done. So that ain't nothing new. But certain symptoms, I pay a little bit closer attention to. And I go to the hospital. If I have to. Or if I pass out, go to the hospital and all that stuff. But... All the blood work this time came back normal. My ferritin level is back to in, back in normal ranges for people for, that's normal for normal, <laughs> which is weird. And my iron levels are normal again. And the doctor's like, you shouldn't have changed that much in a month, but you did. <laughs> so we're gonna do that. Everything else is functioning. My kidneys and my my kidneys and my liver are functioning great. All those normal the electrolytes were normal. Um, the only thing that's a little weird on this last blood work is my platelet count. My platelet count was high on the first round. It was 403 and the high, the highest normal that is listed on my, any of was three, on my list was 369, but mine was 403 at the, at the first appointment in April where they did blood and the second one, it's 421. So we're hoping that, I'm hoping maybe for some answers for that. I'm going to, so that's what I'm doing right now, I'm monitoring myself, I'm going to ask the doctor a few more questions about platelet count, and I'm waiting for my echo, other than that, I'm just monitoring myself, and other than symptom changes, other than my dizziness being a lot worse than it normally is, my shaking being a lot worse than it normally is. Sometimes I'm actually vibrating. It feels like I'm vibrating. I can feel it in my entire body. Other than that, and the heart palpitations and the chest pain, it's because I've had them before, but I've never had them as frequently as I've been having them. A lot of stuff has changed. Not really much has changed with symptoms. That I'm just really fatigued. And for anybody's gonna ask, the doctor said I could keep going to Zumba. But Zumba's been hit or miss for me lately because it's just based off how I'm feeling. Either I'm not going because I don't feel like going, or I'm going and I'm taking it really freaking easy. So I am still going because I think that I need one thing that's normal in my life. I need one thing that isn't gonna stop. And right now that's Zumba. And I'm not, and if I pass out, I'm going to get a lecture beyond belief, and I know I am, <laughs> and, but currently that's what I'm doing. I am still doing Zumba, but I am modifying a whole damn lot. I am not teaching currently. 
because it would be too hard to teach and have to do everything full out. So if I am making it to Zumba, I'm being careful about it. But I am making it to Zumba and making and taking it really easy. Other than that, my symptoms haven't really changed. Um, I have a couple of up, random updates that aren't really necessarily related to this, but my Patreon currently is all chronic illness stuff. I just needed a place to kind of post my chronic illness stuff, so I'm posting that all on my Patreon. So if you're interested in chronic illness, my chronic illness and following me and my health journey and all that, just my Patreon is linked down below. Some of the stuff is free, other stuff you will have to pay for. So I'm just kind of putting it out there. But if you're interested in that, check out my Patreon. If you've not done so already, hit the red subscribe button down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And I'm planning on posting more updates. I might do a few day, day in the lives here and there. I already did one last month. It actually went up on the day that I went to the doctor. So I'll link it in the cards. And all my other chronic illness stuff will be linked somewhere else, somewhere as well. But that's currently what I'm doing. I'm no longer anemic. It, currently it looks like it's my heart and that's what we're focusing on. And I'll know more information after I have my echo and I'll probably do another update or I'll do a day in the life or something. So be on the lookout for some kind of update on this if you're interested in updates. And this and other than this, thank you for watching. Other than that, thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.